Okay. Uh, first of all, we are here for Turkish Red Crescent, uh, and then we will present you uh, what we are doing about uh, our about uh, what we are doing um, for our drones. Uh, we will explain our drone project, why we started this project, uh, and then what we do uh, uh, until now. Uh, we will mention about this. I am Yuxal. Uh, uh, system and process development uh, director in Turkish Jet Crescent, uh, and then uh, my project coordinator and uh, uh, Orkut uh, is here. He will continue uh, presentation, and then uh, my project expert uh, Frant Metin. Uh, we three people we will uh, present you. Uh, about our drone project. Uh, can you hear me? Is there any problem? I, I hear you just fine. fine. Okay, thank you. And then first of all, I know as a uh, national society, uh, I think you know Turkish uh, Jazz it, 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 it established at uh, 1868 uh, until now. We are, uh, we continue our uh, operations for logistics, for example. And then the motto of the participation, uh, party, pat patriotism and uh, assist assistance to the wounded people. Uh, we have been carrying benevolence for uh, 153 years. Uh, only two minutes I will, I, I want to make a, introduce uh, very quickly. Our logistics strategy, uh, it is accepted uh, strategy, and we are now uh, making this, uh, always working on this, uh, on this strategy. We, first of all, uh, uh, we want, uh, as logistics operations, more, uh, we want to increase efficiency of the operations, and we always day by day need some innovative uh, projects such as uh, drones. Drones is an innovation project for us and that uh, it is a part of our strategy. And uh, very quickly, we are, what we are making as a logistics, as a logistics operation, we are making logistics planning. Uh, we manage our transportation and orders uh, and stocks in a planning, uh, in a planning approach, uh, and warehouse management. More than thirty warehouses in all around uh, Turkey. Uh, we are making an effective uh, warehouse management, uh, and we use SAP EVM for the system infrastructure. Uh, so, for the transportation management, uh, we also have more than 1,000 vehicles uh, all around the Turkey. And then we, we manage these uh, vehicles and this transportation operation on SAP TM as a, a system infrastructure. And then value-added services, as all national societies know, uh, we make value-added services for the uh, people who are needed. Uh, so, as you know, uh, humanitarian aid logistics is a main area for us. Uh, we make this operation with high sensitive. And then health logistics. Uh, in Turkey, blood operations uh, is only made by us, is only made by Turkish Red Crescent. And then every day we touch more than 1,000 foreign hospitals every day. Uh, uh, with our uh, with our vehicle fleet, so we also manage, as I said, uh, more than thirty logistics manage, ma ma logistics centers. Uh, sometimes uh, we we make some uh, temporary uh, logistics centers, and then we start to manage it. Uh, we make some consultancy and process analysis services for uh, 
uh, for humanitarian service in Turkey uh, if, if the other societies need it. So we support the other societies and we also make some recycle logistics. Uh, at the end, we have uh, the, the points we are now on Turkey, uh, geographical uh, distribution is like that. Uh, most of the area, uh, we have some uh, logistic center. Uh, and then this is our uh, Turkey situation. Now we start our presentation. Uh, the introduction is, uh, is, is okay uh, for us. I think you know who is Turkish Red Crescent and uh, repeatedly I explained it. Uh, very quickly, and what we are, yeah, what we are doing now. Well, we are getting ready for uh, earthquakes. For example, it's a very important thing in, in Turkey. Uh, as you see, our logistic centers. We are now arranging our uh, operational capability to focus this this map. This is a uh, risk region. Uh, map of Turkey, and uh, we started some preparations. And uh, my friends uh, or could, will continue the presentation. Uh, how the question is: How can we respond these disasters more effectively? Well, thank you, Mr. Ipsar. Uh, I am Orkut. I'm working for. Uh, Turkish Express and as project coordinator for UAVs. And my uh, immersive degree is uh, aeronautical engineering and working for uh, drones from 2007. So uh, we have some uh, experience about uh, from really small drones uh, operated under 200 grams to up to 100 kilograms. Uh, helicopters and aerial response is indispensable, especially for the Mr. Ipsas mentioned that the earthquake, uh, floods, and other uh, national or uh, other type of disasters like uh, chemical factories, uh, fires, or wildfires. But uh, not every time uh, helicopters are uh, cost effective. Sometimes you just need to make last mile delivery or just need to get away uh, over a bridge or uh, you need to get some equipments uh, on the other side of the world. So uh, we are looking for uh, making more effective and efficient uh, to reach people uh, when they need because helicopters and uh, Helicopter related uh, infrastructure is uh, really expensive. They are, uh, they need to operate in this type of situations is a must, but not every time. So uh, we need to fill this gap with unmanned systems to make it more scalable, cost effective, sometimes uh, easy to operate because not everyone doesn't need to use watercraft and pilot degrees. Uh, make some search rescues, maybe autonomous, especially for the long search times, like uh, big landslides, avalanche, or uh, floods. Uh, making uh, these search rescues and logistics making environmental is another advantage of online systems. And uh, working with aircrafts and online systems in hazard, uh, hazardous weather conditions and, uh, for example, a leak in the chemical uh, factory or a nuclear power plant will be a really powerful uh, uh, people uh, at the site. Sometimes you just need to make one way trip. And our systems are really good at this point as well. And uh, low investment, first investment, and operational cost 
uh, really affects the OPEX and CAPEX of these projects. And these uh, lower investment and operation costs make them scalable and cost effective also. In mm -hmm. Okay, by the way, uh, uh, I want to show a real uh, photo for the operations. This is a real uh, uh, photo. For example, this is a helicopter, which we use uh, with the uh, gendarme of Turkey uh, in our operations because of uh, this bus. Uh, this is not an effective operation that we know that uh, sometimes we need to use this helicopter. It's just operation expenses over uh, $2,000 to $10,000 per hour. Yeah. Uh, we are talking about UAVs, but UAVs are not the single type. There are some rotary types like Quantum 4, as the, you can see in the picture. There are some smaller ones or really big ones, up to four, 15 ton uh, UAV, like Global Hub, or five ton UAV, like Bilekter uh, Atinjik. With this, there are some advantages. We mainly uh, starting this type of uh, drug communities and uh, startups. Uh, looking for these advantages, but they are also have some restrictions as well. Uh, for example, most of these drones are not really suitable for uh, harsh conditions and uh, the, not suitable for using in the after earthquakes, dust environments, real heat, but there is like wildfires, etc. And the payload capacities are really low. So these are mainly work as search, but not effective in the rescue missions. And uh, there are some problems with uh, using the airspace. When the helicopter is airborne or other aircraft is airborne, using an air uh, online systems can be uh, really difficult. Uh, and other subsystems and components compatibility and standards will be a problem. For example, you will have five different types of aircraft and not one of them uh, have common uh, spare part. But uh, when we look at these advantages and uh, changing designs to get over with these restrictions uh, will be key for our search and rescue missions. And as the Turkish Express said, we are looking uh, for these restrictions firstly. And we made a uh, design economics. Uh, and uh, at this figure, we want to show uh, this operation concept. We are dreaming about a smaller aircraft with maybe a fixed wing or beetle capability. Uh, and it has some electro-optical systems and some AI tools on it to detect people uh, who need help. And using the same common uh, ground control station, manage the bigger drones for a special design for the rescue missions, not only for the search missions. Uh, their payload capacity uh, will be enough for uh, getting some equipment uh, on the site for making a proper rescue mission. To uh, work on this operation concept, uh, we are finalize our designs with our partners uh, from the Turkish industry, aviation and uh, technology industry. And uh, we select two designs for our needs. Uh, first one is a smaller drone with uh, vertical takeoff and landing capability for uh, restricted areas, but it must be uh, made produce faster than rotorcraft. Because, for example, if you have a rotorcraft, it's 10 meters per second uh, mapping speed, and if you have uh, almost half of <coughs> Flight time, 
but it can um, make cruise speeds over 25 meters per second, uh, can map areas four times, up to four times. So we can uh, get over all of the place and get the map, recipe map and situational awareness uh, faster. So uh, fixed in flight is important for us because our uh, fleets and uh, in Turkey, we live the four season. And we have also the Mediterranean region and some mountainous areas. And give us uh, more coverage and more uh, wind resistance in this Turkish environment. This UAV, this Manta UAV, uh, is specifically used for search missions. But after searching uh, the area and finding the people who need some help, we need to uh, rescue them. So we need some uh, payload capacity to get that uh, their need. If we need to uh, transfer or a uh, 80 kilo, almost 100 kilo, using a helicopter uh, will be a better choice because making the Alman system or a flying vehicle getting two times bigger uh, give you eight times the power of the uh, third degree of uh, capacity because of the volume is uh, getting uh, bigger and bigger. If you make the aircraft two times bigger, you get eight times more weight. And uh, most of the uh, civil aviation authorities, online system categorization is based on the weight. So we want to get under the limit of the pilot license need. But we, uh, at this point, we still need to get uh, as much payload as possible to get the rescue operation done. So uh, we make our analysis and uh, 15 kilograms of payload is the perfect choice for us uh, between the small unmanned systems and the helicopters. Uh, and single user interface with a network capability is a must because when you're using an aircraft with direct RF system, uh, your ground vehicle and ground control station uh, generally makes the logistics of these two types of drones as well. So when you find the victim uh, or uh, have, uh, you need to deliver your payloads at this time. Uh, this is an example uh, area map of the 3D map of an area, which is made by this aircraft at this uh, almost May of this year. And you can see the resolution and you can find people uh, in these types of maps quickly. And sometimes, uh, for example, uh, in a mountain climb, uh, sometimes uh, there are some people get in the mountains and injured and they couldn't uh, finish their climb uh, or a sport or rescuing somebody. But sometimes they just need a small blanket of emergency calorie food or just a small water. Sometimes 500 grams can save a life and uh, we are thinking about if we use 15 kilograms of payload, uh, what can be delivered to disaster area? 25, uh, 21 piece of uh, rations for three days per person, uh, 15 kilograms of water, some life jackets or clothes, almost one kilograms of uh, just one life jacket which is the max. Uh, there are some smaller ones, which can increase up to uh, 30. So with uh, one flight, you can deliver 30, uh, for the 30 people, and not five children. Uh, some tactical medical kits 
or for the industrial fires or the wildfires, we can, we can deliver uh, fireproof clothing or uh, after earthquake or uh, some exa uh, for example, uh, this year we had a really tough uh, winter and most of the roads are uh, closed and some of the people will need uh, some emergency blankets or some uh, calories for getting their uh, body temperature up. And we can deliver 250 minor emergency blankets like these types of situations. Uh, we work with uh, startups and uh, experienced with companies. Until now, we talk about only requirements and then conceptual. Uh, what we do for conceptual. Uh, firstly, we uh, dedicated our requirements and then uh, we de defined the project and then we need some partners. Uh, we, we select, we choose uh, best of the, best of the uh, partner to, to respond to our requirements. So this uh, important uh, signature is very important for us. Uh, so we we can start our uh, development of drone with these companies. Yes, please. Yes, and uh, we started this partnership at the beginning of uh, this year and uh, started to make them in the real world. <coughs> Operations and developments. Uh, at the beginning of this year, uh, this is the uh, small model of the concept of 15 gram payload system. And uh, in the next six months, uh, team worked day and night and get the uh, aircraft in airborne. Uh, its maximum takeoff weight is uh, over 65 kilograms. And uh, they make uh, the first uh, small technology demonstrators that make them uh, in the design aircraft and the fully capable versions in the next six months. And for now, uh, we are uh, making some tests and uh, development is also continue uh, with different types of test vehicles and subsystems. And, uh, and also, uh, this aircraft is modular, so uh, you can just use as a multicopter type of operation for small restricted areas and you can uh, attach or detach uh, additional wings and the tail section for uh, wide area operations. At the end of the day, we just uh, reached the project completed and then there are real photos uh, that we, uh, we made flight or at Ankara. And then they are real photos. Uh, this is uh, our real uh, vehicle. So, yes, please. There are some uh, drones in the market, but uh, for specific operations, you need to design specific aircraft. So, we make our choose from designing an aircraft for uh, rescue operations uh, and making them uh, as utilized as possible in all of the time because when you make an investment you need to uh, get money most of the time so with the wide area and the small area operations you can use this aircraft uh, this aircraft is uh, still Light and testing, and we 
and the teachers, the, the field people on the field, because they must, uh, they know the climate mostly, because with this uh, office, you cannot uh, find all the requirements. You need to get on the field and get your hands dirty to make the perfect uh, fit. So we are working at the field at Ankara, as Mr. Ipsa said, and uh, getting uh, most of the uh, design operations and uh, field tests as much as we can do to, if another uh, disaster or emergency needs, it needs to work. So we need to train people also because uh, everybody has a pen, but uh, if an artist has a pen, they can make some real artwork. It's just a tool, uh, but one of the best tools in the possible uh, in our needs. So we need to educate our uh, targets. Flying an aircraft is another uh, thing, but flying an aircraft with the perspective of a pilot and uh, operates them in an uh, operational concept way is really different because you can use the aircraft to get best value from it. You can use smaller DJIs, you can use this type of special designed aircraft, you can use uh, bigger helicopters, but as a uh, Turkish Red Crescent, we need to uh, get the mission done, not just flying an aircraft or not just uh, operating an aircraft. We need to get the mission successful uh, and uh, rescue people as much as possible. So, uh, operation concept and getting the uh, tools utilized on the field is. Uh, is the first aim for us. So theoretical class like training and operational training is crucial for us and our five personnel is uh, on uh, in a training program with the other partners, with the developer of the aircraft and they are working really close together. Uh, to create an uh, operation concept with uh, all equipments and flight training. And these are the technical specifications of the aircraft. As I said before, it's 65 kilograms of maximum takeoff weight. Uh, this type of uh, you saw the photos are these are the uh, Multi-copter version and minimum and maximum speeds are the GPS position. You can reach them, but these are autonomous uh, limits. Uh, at this first iteration, we use lithium batteries, but uh, team is also working on the hybrid version for uh, over an hour operations. Uh, it's environmental uh, conditions are. Uh, designed with the experience of uh, UAVs operated uh, at the Antarctica for uh, scientific missions. The team is also the developer of the Antarctic region uh, scientific programs, drone developer as well. And uh, we use the direct direct communication system because some emergency systems or uh, remote areas, you cannot find uh, like 4G or other type of uh, communication infrastructures. And these are some technical drawings of the uh, slide drone model. And uh, with this- for, for the next step, we yeah. have new uh, projects. 
uh, not only humanitarian aid or disaster logistics, but uh, blue bus transportation, we have a project. Uh, but this is our next step. Firstly, uh, we are adapting the uh, humanitarian aid sites. Uh, then we will use this uh, for logistics. Logistics, uh, for example, uh, after we uh, got permissions for the operation which we can execute in uh, in inside the city. So uh, we want to make we want to use this uh, drones for our blood transportation operations. Especially for Istanbul and Ankara, which traffic is very terrible. Uh, so, uh, uh, so the vehicles all around Istanbul and Ankara, uh, maybe sometimes they can late uh, to the hospital. So uh, this is our next for the future. We plan to use this uh, drones. Uh, this is the first route. Uh, by the way, Kızılay has blue operation centers more than 18 all around uh, Turkey, and then uh, eight, eight hospitals uh, in Turkey. Uh, two of them is uh, in Altıntepe, in, in uh, Istanbul Anatolian site. Uh, and there is uh, also island. Uh, we have some place in island. So we draw a, we draw a route uh, to make this, but uh, I think after we got permissions about that, we will start uh, this project, how it, it was. Uh, so uh, we will try to do that. That's, yes, please. Yes, uh, this is more like uh, taxi drone needs because uh, taxi drones are developed for the uh, metropolitan cities like Istanbul. And uh, it's not about the distance, it's all about the time. So blood delivery uh, is really important and it's uh, really a time constraint operation. So distances are small, but uh, in this traffic jam, uh, it will, can take almost an hour. And for the island like Heybelada, you need to find a ship or uh, some small boat to get this island at the uh, like main uh, blood transfer site. So uh, operating in an urban area uh, is really restricted by the local aviation authorities and we are working really closely with them to make them operate uh, in this urban area. Because okay. companies making uh, rural areas, but this is urban area and really different. Yes, and this is the last uh, slide. Uh, what we are talking about the uh, blue box. Blue box is uh, like that. We have big, middle, and small boxes. I think we need to work for a big, big box, but uh, we we can uh, very we can easily uh, transport this middle box and small box uh, with these drones. So thank you so much. This is our, uh, if you want to see our real uh, video of the operation, why we, we are doing these uh, studies, we can show this video. If you have time, if you want, it's up to you. Almost. A minute, yeah. A minute, only one minute. Is it okay? Um, yeah, sure, if you want to try and share that. Okay. Can you see this?
Yes. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you. That was really fantastic and interesting and um, some amazing work going on. I'm sure people have questions. So I would like to open up for the group um, if anyone wants to come off mute and, and ask a question. You can also um, raise your hand and I'll call on you. Uh, Brent, you came off mute. Do you have a question? I, I do. Um, first of all, thank you very much. This is really interesting. Um, I, I don't want to go down a long um, rabbit hole, I guess is the, the phrase, but um, it's a large UAV, and which brings a lot of questions about safety. It's pretty heavy. Uh, it's pretty impressive uh, looking. Um, I, I, I'm assuming in Turkey, is, is that are you going to have any issues using uh, a drone that large for search and rescue or for delivering goods? Um, I, I hear I just I, I'm based in the U.S. and here there's a lot of rules that make it a lot easier to operate under under I guess 25 kilos and you were you are at 50 kilos empty weight. So I'm just curious about operating in Turkey and, and the challenges you might face with that. And anyway, that was my first question. Uh, yes, please. Thank you, Brent. Uh, as you said, this is a big drone, and it's uh, class, uh, it's uh, classed as a different type of uh, in the Turkey's uh, local aviation authority is made up as a UAV second class, and it requires all the systems redundant with. As you said, some safety extra measures for it. Uh, at this first stage, we just use drones for getting rescue, not uh, always on the urban site at the first time. For example, uh, when the heavy snow is an issue and uh, when the, you cannot open a road with big heavy machinery, uh, we will use them as a last mile delivery system. Uh, at this place, there are no one in the uh, outside and uh, they just need to get emergency needs they wanted. Uh, at the integration and uh, some safety measures and aviation authorities, uh, safety classifications uh, are finished, uh, we want to use them uh, in the urban areas as well. But uh, in the 15 kilo regime, uh, you can get most of the things at the site, but uh, when you make it 20 kilos, uh, it's getting bigger of the square root of the maximum takeoff weight. So it's a big drone, but not just really big, like a helicopter or something. Uh, very, very uh, briefly, in case of uh, disaster, there is no rule, as you know. Mm. Yeah. So uh, we we have two ways to use these drones. In case of disaster, we don't need any permission. But in case of blue trans transportation, you need to take uh, permission. Uh, so, but we focus on the first uh, step. Firstly, uh, uh, we, we want to develop this to use it uh, in our uh, humanitarian aids in case of disaster. Next step is to, uh, to, get, to take some permissions about uh, aviation, but this is, uh, but we started to uh, make dialogue with these uh, authorities. Uh, this, this can continue, but uh, because of Turkish Red Crescent, government uh, always support us. This is the another case. So they support us. So, uh, I, I, we believe that uh, we will we will get uh, permission uh, in a few months, and then we will use these drones in our routine uh, blue operations, for example. Yes. 
can we answer you? Oh, you did. Yeah, thank you. No, I, and I understand this is incremental, and you're and you're you're developing a new technology, and you're trying to fit within the rules and that. Um, so it, it was it's very impressive the progress you've made. Um, so and I, just the second question, if I can, Dan, real quick, your relationship with Maxwell. I, I understand they are developing the the intellectual property and the technology, and the um, the National Society is partnering with them. I'm assuming they will want to commercialize this product and and for other purposes eventually. Is that my is that the right understanding? That, yes. that you are kind of like their their test customer almost, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. but ultimately they will develop it for other other business needs commercially. Uh, yes, we, we we understand very good. Uh, on Maxwell and uh, Fly Bibelos, they are a commercial. Uh, partners yes you are right but we are not uh, we are not a, a technology company something like that so in this relationship uh, we this same ecosystem for example uh, we can instruct them we can uh, we can for conceptual uh, working we can support them then they take the informations and then they they can use these drones uh, in our operations uh, without without us uh, they can't test this because of the support and the requirement is uh, because we believe that the for develop for development of these uh, drones uh, some national societies are really important because they serve for humanitarian, uh, not for trade. As as we as we are, we we, we don't think about trade. But uh, these companies also produce these drones, and then they can sell, they can make trade on this model. This is not our. Uh, they can do that. But uh, we don't uh, relate to about that. So, so is the idea that Maxwell could um, eventually distribute this product to other national societies outside of Turkey, or, or have you even discussed that? Is that something which is? Um... Of course, at the end of the day, uh, we can support this for you to to you uh, for your usage. We can support. Uh, but we are not we are not a trade and we don't talk about trade and money. <laughs> this is another uh, yeah. thing. Uh, if you need this, we can uh, connect uh, connect this uh, our uh, partners with you. Uh, they can sell. This is uh, this is a relationship between you. But we can support you. We are uh, very. Uh, Please do that. It is. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. Great, thank you. There's a question in the chat from Feliciana. It says, good job. I would like to ask, how long can the drone support the 15 kilograms in flight time? Uh, almost half an hour for the detail operation. Uh, over uh, 40, 40 or 45 minutes with the fixed pink attachments. But uh, we are also working on with the team to get them hybrid uh, drive system to get over to our uh, limit. This is the next step, but uh, it's for now, it's, uh, we can say, uh, half an hour. Uh, but, but for example, uh, with the, Mr. Yüksel show this blood transport uh, routes for 10 kilometers, 12 kilometers, uh, three months ago, there's a landslide uh, in the northern side of the Turkey, but uh, you cannot get the other side of the river. The aircraft is mostly designed for these type of missions. 
for the first step. But then uh, yeah. we want to develop this. Uh, this is about the capacity of battery. Yeah. As you know, if you increase this uh, um, battery. Yeah, lithium battery. Uh, lithium battery, yeah. If you uh, develop this lithium battery, uh, I, I think in this uh, project, we uh, are in, in an ecosystem. In ecosystem, what, what we use uh, battery in this uh, models. For example, we try to develop this battery. Lithium-based batteries we used. Yeah. But battery management system is uh, developed by other partners of the Maxwell and Climate Plus technology. Ah, okay. Uh, Panasonic, something like that? Uh, yeah. Ah, Panasonic, so, okay. okay. Uh, so uh, we, we want to develop this battery. It is about the battery. The question, the capacity is related to capacity. Uh, capacity of the battery. It is important. The important point is battery. And also you can uh, use, you can reduce payload to increase lifetime or increase payloads and make a smaller short routes because team also uh, demonstrated the 30 kilograms of payloads in a small, small short range. Okay. Great, thank you. Um, I was wondering, uh, the program budget for your drones, is that something that Turkish Red Crescent is investing in out of their core budget? Is this a, a grant that you all received? Um, how much? Uh, where are you finding the investment to make this happen? Uh, Red Crescent is also uh, support the program, but it started as a uh, private investment, uh, but the team is also wanted to use them in, uh, for the humanitarian response. And it's directly matched with the this is, this is a win-win project, by the way. Uh, our cost, yeah, our, as a Turkish person, our cost is uh, approximately 1 million Turkish lira, which means, uh, it means 1 million 50,000. Yeah. 50,000 uh, 50, uh, uh, United States dollar. 50,000. It is our cost. But uh, as a project, if you think, uh, it is more than 50,000. Uh, but uh, it is a win win project. So uh, it is a partnership, something like that. Not all costs are uh, some uh, governments support some of them. And then uh, because this company is, is supported in Turkey. Uh, very well. Uh, so, uh, so, so we only we we only uh, cost only fifty thousand uh, United States dollars. Yeah. But maybe it's not a really good uh, approximation because, uh, as I said, team is really keen on with working with the Turkish Red Crescent and Turkish Crescent is also. So they make some investments, maybe getting with them and getting some calls is a better approximation. Yeah. Okay, great, thank you. Are there any other questions from the group as we're coming up on the hour? Okay, thank you so much for taking the time to present and share with us today. Um, we all learned a lot and it was really fascinating, interesting to see how much you're doing. Oops, sorry. One more question, I'm sorry. Nope. Uh, so how many people have been trained and what is the future plans for training more personnel? For the first step, uh, five people will be the drone pilots. Uh, they are continuing their training because the training is uh, 
uh, how long does it take? Three or uh, 16. Uh, 16 weeks. Yeah, 16 weeks. Uh, it means four months, something like that. So this training is not a uh, usual training. This is this is a uh, uh, very well qualified. Maybe you can mention about that. Yeah, the training is given by the Turkish and the British pilots, uh, ex-military pilots, and uh, this uh, project with the Red Crescent is not just flying an aircraft. It's about uh, how you can make a logistics of the aircraft, uh, how can you respond which type of disaster. Uh, all of these are included. Yeah, so now five, and then always we want to make five pilots. But uh, now we have only one drone and one Delta drone. Uh, so we want to increase our capacity. If we increase our capacity for the future plan, maybe if we take uh, 10, if you got uh, 10 drones, maybe we need uh, more than 10 pilots. So uh, for, the, for the first step, uh, one, one drone, one and uh, a little drone, two drones, uh, five pilots for the first step. So uh, thank you so much, uh, you listen to us. Uh, and uh, if you have any uh, any other questions, you can connect with me. If you want to make uh, connections about this, uh, this our partners, or if you want to visit us, if you want to see our uh, drones, you always welcome to Turkey. We can show uh, uh, and we can make flights with you. Uh, it is uh, it is an uh, open invitation to to you. Thank you so much. Uh, for taking your time. Thank you. Thank you. Well done, guys. Great. Thank you.